Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I know, I know, it's been a long time, but sometimes life just gets in the way. I've been busy, a lot of work, and unfortunately, I've learned that I do not scale. I would probably give just about anything to be like uh, Michael Keaton's character in that movie, Multiplicity, where he can actually clone himself out and make everyone do certain tasks, but alas, that is not life for me. Um, today's video, we're going to discuss something very short and sweet. I am going to discuss the network architecture that I use for a vast majority of my clients. I want to go ahead and say this now. This is what I use for a vast majority of them. It does not mean it's the best. Network architects tend to be a little bit OCD on how they do things. So if you have another way of doing it, or you don't like my way, you do you, boo-boo. This is just an example of what I do and why I do it. So, anyways, a vast number of my clients have multiple FortiGates. They are spread out across the US or the world or, or whatever. And one thing that they have in common is that all of these FortiGate locations need to be able to reach back to a centralized data center, whether that's in Azure, AWS, a private cloud, or their own on-prem data center that they maintain. So, what do we do? We have a whole bunch of sites. We need to make sure that they're all able to talk to each other perfectly fine. And God forbid you don't want any network architecture overlap. That way you can have clean routing, no NATs, no VIPs, none of that nasty stuff. Well, here's how I do it. So what you see right here is the VLAN architecture and subnet architecture that I utilize for my various VLANs. VLAN 10 is almost always my data VLAN, short and sweet. VLAN 20 is almost always my voice VLAN. VLAN 30 is used usually for guests, VLAN 40 for printer, etc. You guys can read the rest of it. Now, there's a couple of things that make this really worthwhile. So one of the first things you should notice when looking at this is that each VLAN has a range of 10 for the second octet. So for instance, VLAN 10 can be 10 through 19, VLAN 20 can be 20 through 29. Why is that like that? Well, that's because that's what I use as a VLAN identifier. V the second octet on my subnets are my VLAN identifier. The third octet, where you see the X, is where I place my branch location identifier. So for instance, I can support, with this setup, over 2,500 locations if I chose to. There's a lot of subnets per, and a lot of people like to say, oh, well, why don't you just use the second octet for your identifier? Well, if I use the second octet for my identifier, I can only support 255 or 256 locations, you know? And I, I'm, I'm all about doing more with less, right? So what you end up doing is you end up having 10.10.1 or 10.10.0 if you wanted to start at the very beginning for site one. And whenever you go from zero all the way up to 255, you just increment the second one up to 11. So then all of a sudden VLAN 10 becomes 10.11.0 for site number 256 or 257 or 258, etc. And you just keep pushing through. And like I said, since you're going 10 through 19, 20 through 29, etc. for each specific VLAN, you're in a very good place from a subnetting standpoint because you're able to have, you know, a ton of branches with no overlap. And because of this, you can utilize your FortiGate and use ADVPN or something like that to put you in position to dynamically route, do everything clean like you want, etc. Now, like I said, I use the second octet for VLAN identification. You might want to use the second octet for site identification, in which case each site has a slash 16. That's perfectly fine. You're just cutting down the number of branches that that type of architecture would actually support. And that's one of the main things that folks really need to be cognizant of when they're doing network planning is because they'll, you know, they'll do one thing and limit themselves in the future because they haven't thought about possible growth opportunities and things like that. So if you're doing consulting work for an organization, please check with them about future plans and things that may come up. If it's your organization, I like to be more conservative. I would much rather have the opportunity for 2,500 branches and just have a couple more routes in there dynamically than I would want in, you know, being limited saying, okay, every location got a slash 16, now I'm limited by what I can do there, right? Because standardization is key in the enterprise. 
and all of a sudden you have to hack a slash 16 in half, that second octet's no longer your identifier for your location. It just kind of unravels from there. So anyways, hopefully this provides you guys some insight on how I do things from a network architecture standpoint. It's very straightforward. It scales very well, uh, especially for sites that have smaller units like 60Fs or 40Fs. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment below. And if this is your first time seeing one of my videos, do me a solid. Hit the notification bell and the subscribe button. Pay attention because I'm going to post more content. Some things that are coming down the pipe. Um, we're going to do a video on VRFs and a couple other things. We're going to do some ADVPN videos with BGP built in. Um, I'm also going to start a secondary channel. This one's specific to Fortinet, but I'm doing a lot of consulting across a lot of different avenues. Doing some systems administration stuff. As you can see here, I'm actually in the process of standing up a, uh, a VM environment, a virtualization environment, a little pseudo hyper-converged thing, if you will. I'm doing a lot of network consulting, a lot of general network consulting. Funny enough, I actually have clients finding me through Fortinet Guru and asking me to work on their Palo devices. So uh, if it's a firewall, I can do it. If it's a network switch, I can do it. So I'm loving the opportunity to provide guidance and assistance however I can. So keep an eye out for that whenever it comes through. And uh, until next time, guys, be safe.